Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our new 2018 NPC National Bodybuilding Overall Champion. We had him here before. He's back again. Hunter Labrada, congratulations. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me back on. It's cool to be on for two overalls in one year. That's Yeah, sure. stellar year. Junior USA yeah. win. Uh, go right to nationals your first time and, and win. I mean, that is just unheard of. That's Cody Montgomery territory. Well, honestly, you want to hear a fun fact? J.M. Mannion actually told me this uh, after he shot me at the uh, Junior USA overall shoot. He goes, Hunter, I know you're planning on doing nationals. The last person to win a junior national show and a national show in the same year that I shot in the 33 years that I've done this, one other person's done it, and it was Phil Heath. That's right. So, not bad company to be in. That was a pretty cool fact. And yeah. I kind of had that in the back of my head the whole prep for this one. So <laughs> not bad company to be in. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. You know, it, it's funny because sometimes when you're a success too quickly, it, it's like, what do I do now? You know, because I, I even saw your interview after you won and you said, you know, yeah, I was good enough to win the show, but I got a lot of work to do now. You know, a lot of times guys have to put so much work in to actually get the pro card that they're ready to almost compete as a pro. You're only, what, 26 now? Yes, sir, 26. I'll be 27 in May. Congratulations. And, you know, the funny thing is, though, but you, now you have a lot of work to do still to really be a, a successful pro. So you well, almost that's, turned that's... pro too easily. Did you, think you, did you actually think you would win it the first time? Um... I, I really did think I was going to win the overall the first time. I, the whole prep, that was what, to be honest with you, I flew to Miami um, with the mindset that anything less than an overall was an L in my book. Um, That's awesome. I told Andrew this. I told my dad this before. Um, if I had gotten second, I wouldn't have taken the card. Mm -hmm. um, if I had gotten first, I would have taken the card, but in my mind, I would have been very disappointed that I wasn't able to, you know, bring it home all the way. So, right. um, you know, I just, I'm really, really, uh, really fortunate and feel very blessed to have been able to, you know, bring a package that was able to get it done. You know, there was a lot of good bodybuilders there in my class and in the overall, um, obviously it's MPC nationals. It's the biggest pro qualifier of the year. So definitely, uh, hard show um to go out and win and uh that's what we did so very stoked on that and uh, just really happy about it i i've said this before when i used to look back at my pictures and video well there's more pictures there wasn't that many much video when i was competing and i would look at it i would actually be like ready to throw up because i would see all the terrible things that i didn't like about the way i looked rather than see all the gifts that i had what when you look back at the, at the pictures and the video are you happy with what you see and give me your assessment of yourself if you were critiquing yourself you know <laughs> definitely um as far as a uh, critique of that weekend and the shape that i brought that weekend um Obviously, it's no secret at prejudging. I was definitely had a little bit of film of water on me for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, got, got off stage. I already knew before, but got feedback from Andrew and my father, and then uh, you know, just kind of some other people whose eyes and opinions I really do value and trust. And uh, we were all on the same page about it. We had a film of water on us, and we need to get it off. Um, we had 24 hours to do it. And that being said, the look that we brought to finals. Um, I was very happy with because I felt like it was as good as we were going to get that day, which is the most you can ask for. Sure. Um, that being said, um, as far as looking at the pictures and being happy, I always do this with my girlfriend and my dad when we're looking at my pictures. I always have to cover up my face with my thumb <laughs> to look because it's like, as funny as that sounds, you know, it's like whenever I can see my face, I'm always like this instantly like, no, nah, it could be better. But, you know, like whenever I can, like, cover up the face and just look at the physique, I'm like, okay, well, this, this, this is good, and then this, this, and this needs to come up. Right. Um, as far as uh, what we're focusing on this off season, it's no different than what I've been focusing on for the last two or three years now. Obviously, from the waist down is my strong suit. Sure. I have strong legs, um, complete legs, the hamstrings, quads, calves, everything, glutes. I feel like they're all pretty in sync and very strong body part of mine. Um that being said, it's no secret that my back needs to come up, obviously, a lot to be competitive on a pro stage. Uh, so that'll be the main focus going into this offseason is building a bigger, thicker back. Mm -hmm. And then just um, from the waist up, I just need thickness everywhere, honestly. So that'll be the uh, main goal during this next offseason. Um, I've told 
a couple people. I'll tell you now, the plan right now is uh, 2019 will be completely off, taking time to focus on adding the size that I need to, taking time to focus on growing my brand personally, sure. growing the LeBron and Nutrition brand, and just really, uh, you know, trying to make the most out of this win and, you know, just position myself to be ready to take on 2020, because 2020 is when I will be making my pro debut. Yeah, I, I saw that. You said you'd be doing New York Pro more than likely, where your dad kind of made his pro debut, which would be kind of yeah, cool. Definitely. Yeah. You know, um, I saw that there was some video we were just watching we put up on the screen of you posing with Flex Lewis. Where did, how did that come about? Um, so there was a couple of people that were really uh, just not, like, helping me from a standpoint of, like, telling me what to do. But, you know, I'd be, like, sending them pictures and getting a little bit of feedback here and there. And uh, Flex was one of them. Uh, Branch Warren was another one. I was sending him pictures regularly, and actually he looked at me when I was up in Dallas at three weeks out. Um, so that was an awesome experience. And uh, so whenever I was in, uh, flew into Miami, it was one of those things. I've been doing a lot of content with Joe Bennett, hypertrophy coach on Instagram, and him and Flex are pretty close. So right. ended up being one of those things that we just went to Flex's gym to get that pump in and then really just kind of get a look at uh, – get a look at ourselves and you know it was really cool flex ended up making it home early from italy and uh was able to take a look at me in person right. um that being said you know like i said i kind of been in touch with him before sending him stuff so there's a couple of tweaks he made to my posing and stuff that i felt really made a difference uh yeah. in the weeks leading up to and the day of that i was there so that's how that came about um yeah I find that interesting that you say that, that Flex made a few tweaks to your posing. Your dad was probably the greatest poser, like one of the greatest posers in the IFBB history. What is your, does your dad give you tidbits or you don't like to listen to your dad? How does that work? No, 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 no. Um, so Lee is, it's kind of funny. I tell people this. I, I, I can't really get much help from him for my mandatories. Yeah. As funny as that sounds, because he's so damn good at it. It's just like, he's like, why can't, why can't you do it? Like, just do it like this. Oh, he's not you know? good at explaining it. He's like, not a good not, teacher. I got you. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things, you know, it's like, he does that, and then someone who, like, like Flex or, like, Andrew might be like, okay, Hunter, pick your rib cage up, and, like, retract your scapula yeah. more, let's get this arm around a little more, like, like little things that I can actually put in my head and think of. You right, know? So right. So, mandatories and stuff. Um I'm not going to say he's not good at doing them because obviously he's one of the best coaches. He's not good at explaining it's, stuff. It's hard for him to teach them to me. That being said, all of the transitions yeah. and a lot of the stuff that you saw in my finals posing routine, that is the stuff that I very much so value him to teach right, me. Right, right. You know, the, the posing it through transitions because sure. to me, transitions aren't just getting into another pose or an opportunity to be showing, like, posing in motion, obviously. Right, right. No, a lot of people don't realize the transitions are really what make everything look smooth and, and, and make you look confident up on stage. Otherwise, you look like a robot just standing there moving, you know, going from pose to pose. That, and then, you know, obviously it gives you the opportunities to, you know, like really showcase, you know, like the little tidbits of your physique, you know, like whenever sure. you're, you know, like turning or transitioning, you know, if you squeeze when you're at this point, you're going to right. show off these striations or, you know, like highlight your waist or like, oh, I can show off my quad whenever, it's like little things like that. So right. the transitions definitely are important. Right. You know, I'm, and I'm sure as a kid growing up, you probably watched your dad and everything like that. A lot of that stuff just gets kind of like assimilated into your into your soul, essentially. You know, you don't even probably know why you can do certain things on stage that you do because you just became part of, of 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 nature for you. You know, not other other guys don't grow up in a household where their parents are like bodybuilders and you know actually do it every single day. They have to kind of learn it on their own, like from from scratch. You kind of, I'm sure you were hitting double bicep poses when you were three years old, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that, man. It's kind of funny. Like, to be honest with you, uh, my mom obviously was with my dad through his entire pro career, always did his tan, was always traveling right. with him. And, you know, it's to the point where she's got, I trust her, I'm more than like 99% <laughs> of the people in bodybuilding. I'd be going over to my parents' house, and if my dad wasn't there and it was posing practice time, I'd be like, Robin, come on. And she'd, <laughs> she'd be drilling me in the garage because she has an eye for it, too. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool thing for sure. We do it as a family. Right, right, right. And that's funny because my son is, you know, he's, he's two and a half and he's hitting double bicep poses. I don't even, you know, show him it. He just does it. He just watches videos he sees on my phone or something like that. And he'll just start hitting double bicep yeah, poses. Yeah, no, definitely. My, my daughter, my daughter's three and a half, actually. And she'll <laughs> definitely, uh, like, 
every single morning that we'd wake up, you know, I'd obviously have to send Andrew a video and my pasty pale see-through ass needs to have like a little light so we can actually see what's going on. Yeah. And she'd always want to take her video after mine or get in it with me and it was super cute. So it's, it's cool to see for sure. Yeah, kids pick things up quickly. It's funny, I'm 50 years old, I have, I have a two and a half year old. You're, you're 26 and you have a, the same age, you know, a three year old. It's pretty funny. I guess I'm yeah. a slow learner. Let me ask you this question. <laughs> you know, Hunter, you know, most companies, you know, when they have to hire athletes, they obviously have to pay them and they have to get people to represent the brand. LeBron is unique because your dad was the, you know, was the, the face of the brand for many, many years. And then now you're the face of the brand. Do you actually have to get, does you get paid by LeBron? Are you actually sponsored or is it kind of like part of your, you know, you own the company too type of thing? You know, um, my, my role right there, uh, my role with Labrada has shifted over the years. So um, I've worked at Labrada in some capacity since I've been 16 years old. Right. From the time I was 16 to the time I was 18, I was riding around in a van doing deliveries in Houston or working in the warehouse. That's awesome. Um, at 18, when I went off to school during the summer holidays and the Christmas breaks, yeah. um, I was actually able to transition into more of like an office assistance role. Like I'd help the R&D guy get like our certificates of compliance out and stuff mm -hmm. but it was also like almost like an internship because i was able to sit in on the management meetings and the marketing right. meetings and this that and another and whenever i completed my degree from texas a and m i came to work at labrada full-time oh, you know, cool. monday through friday eight to six working 40 50 hours a week for labrada <laughs> on the marketing side of things um so that happened um and then before i did my first shows like right around my birthday actually it got to the point where i was receiving enough interest for you know online and in-person personal coaching right and i had gotten to the point where it's like you know i know i want to be heavily involved in the business at some point mm -hmm. but right now um i am able to you know do the bodybuilding lifestyle right. i'm able to support myself at this point because there's enough interest um and then at that point, um, my compensation from Labrada did go from, you know, like I was a full-time employee to it was more of an athlete uh, relationship. Gotcha. That being said, I'm still in the office two days a week. I'm still at the marketing meeting. Um, I'm still heavily involved with what we do there. I'm very passionate about what we do at Labrada. Um, I, I really think what we do there is special just because not only do we make quality, quality, quality supplements, but we're one of the few companies out there that put a lot of time and money and resources into telling you how to use them and how to sure. eat correctly. We don't preach you need these supplements. We preach you need whole foods and then you can fill your gaps with these supplements that we sure. make. So sure. um, it's, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to be in the position that I am with the company. They obviously support the hell out of me, um, both my father on a personal level and the company as a whole. Right. Um, everyone that works there is really into bodybuilding. There's a ton of you know bodybuilders of past that worked there you know people are just genuinely excited about it so it's definitely a cool environment to be a part of uh definitely feel very blessed to call abroad nutrition my home yeah I, you know i i still say to this day i think you guys have the best pre-made rtd um oh man yeah vanilla I, I, I say the same thing to everybody i know i'm <laughs> extremely biased but I've tried every single one of them on the market multiple, multiple, multiple times. Obviously, we yeah. R&D and keep up with everything. And it really is the best tasting one. And then yeah. obviously, taste is one thing. Profile is another. You can't find one with a cleaner profile no. either. Zero sugar, zero lactose, yeah. 30 grams of protein. It's, it's, it's really is an awesome product. It's, and, you know, it shows. It's the number one drink in all the uh, Europa coolers. It's the number one RTD on Amazon. It's... It's doing very well for us. And it's been like that for years. It's not like it's it's like a flash in the pan. It, you know, you know a product is good when, when it's been around for like 10 years or more and it's it's still in the same formulation, in the same flavors, the same inception. It didn't need to be redone or anything like that. That's how I, I know a product is solid. I, look, yeah, I've, man, I've to be had honest, many, many you, times, you know. You hit it on the head, man. That chocolate RTD, I've been drinking that same exact chocolate RTD <laughs> formula since I was a freshman in high school. <laughs> You know, and like obviously over the years, like we've done different flavors. We recently right. released like a mint chocolate one. We did a cafe mocha one, salted caramel sales like gangbusters. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's like it's one of those things we haven't had to go back and redo it because right. of, you know, we were using like XYZ ingredients that the FDA doesn't like anymore, this, set or another. It's been right. just a tried and true product for us for 10 years yeah. now. So, yeah. I happen to, personally, I happen to like the vanilla the best, but that's just me. I'm a vanilla type of guy. Yeah. <laughs>
So what? Regard, what, regardless of your preference, none of them are bad. Obviously, that's right. if you're a vanilla guy, you like vanilla. I'm a chocolate guy, I like chocolate. <laughs> everywhere in between. You know, but you, you, uh, your father actually came out with that drink around the time that Muscle Milk was really big, and, and Muscle Milk, in my mind, is, is you know pretty crappy. And your dad put like these great ingredients in it, and I was reading that, and I, and I just was like looking for something that just was terrible in it, and there isn't. And I, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a big believer in high protein, moderate fat, you know, low carb type dieting, and this really inserts really well into that type of uh, an eating plan, you know. Well, you know, Dave, like when I'm not on prep, you know, like prep's one thing. Obviously, I'm using our isolate. I need to. But when I'm not on prep, I have, you know, I keep a case in my fridge and I actually keep a case of them in my truck mm. just because they don't need to be refrigerated. And, yeah. you know, like I forget protein, this, that, and another. I'm on the road. I keep microwave rice packs and those in the back of my truck. I'm mm. never without a meal. Um, <laughs> You know, there's a lot of homeless people in Houston that are just hungry too. So I always, I'll pass those out the window That's with awesome. stoplights and stuff. And you know, they're, they're, they're great. You don't have to refrigerate them or anything like yeah. that. So I'm a big fan of them. That's a little awesome. biased, but I'm a big fan. <laughs> you you got to take a video of you handing them out to like the homeless people. That would be great, you know, great for the company to show that. Yeah, right? no, for sure. I didn't even that, think about then, that. Uh, I keep a box of our bars too, the Lean Body Bars. They're pretty, uh, pretty awesome too. It's an yeah. all natural uh, bar, you know, no artificial anything. Obviously, uh, we can't say that with all the uh, blood-sucking, hungry attorneys out in California <laughs> these days. But uh, it is an all-natural bar, and it's a really good one. So yeah. I keep those in the truck, too, uh, for that. And then just for me, because I like snacking on them, right. too. No, it, 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 I'm, it, you're, you're a really blessed guy in the sense that you have that Labrador nutrition. You know, obviously... Uh, always there for you and uh, you know whether you you're competing or not and it's something that you're passionate about and it's something that you've been basically immersed in since you're a kid which is which is which is a very unique situation that a lot of other guys don't have I just did a, re a video recently where I kind of compared I don't know if you saw where I compared you to Sergio Oliva Jr. who is also obviously the son of a, of a, of a famous bodybuilder former Mr. Olympia Sergio Oliva Sr. And you know you're in a completely different situation. Sergio's dad didn't want him to get into bodybuilding; was completely against it, and he was almost like fighting the, the system. You kind of were like assimilated into the whole industry by your dad. It, it, it's a completely different type of situation, yet you're both very successful. No, yeah, for sure. I actually watched that video you did last night. Um, it was an awesome video. I can't Thank agree you. with you more about your assessment. You know, he's definitely couple years ahead of me he's definitely had a chance to prove him to be a top tier pro mm -hmm. um obviously by winning the new york pro and then his performance this last year earning his olympia qualification and everything so you know i'm obviously i'm proven so i don't really think there's much of a who's better to <laughs> yeah. talk about right now you know so um i'm just i'm bottom of the barrel i earned my right to to uh, be at the <laughs> bottom of the barrel this last weekend <laughs> And uh, it was actually, uh, he was one of the first people that reached out to me and congratulated me. And actually, whenever I landed back in Houston after missing my damn flight, I got in at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he was out in Australia, so he had middle of the day for him. We actually talked for about 45 minutes just because. Uh, awesome. You know, the, the, it's, 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 we had a really good laugh about it. It's genuinely like creepy how similar the paths are, you know. Yeah. The dads. The national overall wins, yeah. down to even the freaking ethnicity. We're both Cuban, right? Go figure. I, so oh, that's right. Just, I forgot you're, you're Cuban. That's right. I can yeah, Everyone forgets because I'm like see through pasty pale and I got my mom's Ohio skin, but I am 50%. <laughs> I am 50%. Your father Cuban. doesn't look Cuban though either, so it doesn't, you know, it, it's a little different. Yeah. I never saw it's him. It's funny. I always, uh, anytime I'm competing and I actually have a tan on, people are like, damn, Hunter looks a lot like his dad. <laughs> you do. Yeah. You guys yeah. do look a lot alike, though. So. Yeah. You guys so, but yeah, anyways, getting back to me and Sergio, you know, it's just, it, it's cool to have him as a friend um, and to have someone that's very, we're, him and I are two of two, you know, it's a very unique situation that we're in. Um, and it's just really cool to be able to, you know, kind of call on him and, you know, kind of hear how he handled, you know, winning nationals, how right. he handled, you know, like turning that into business opportunities for himself in the year that followed. Um, you know, it's how you conduct yourself as a pro, honestly. Mm -hmm. So feel fortunate to be able to pick his brain about that. He's an awesome guy. Obviously, I know people will be like, we've had our differences in the past, obviously. But, um, you know, I think you're going to have that with anything, with anyone, whenever people are passionate about what they're doing and wanting right. to be the best. So, you know, we actually had a uh, really awesome time with him in California. Uh, another Labrada athlete, Pat Moore, actually competed in the Cal Pro. 
and uh, me and Pat and my dad and Sergio and everyone, we actually actually all went out to dinner afterwards and just, you nice. know, really squashed everything and had a great time That's and good. hugged it out. And ever since then, we've been been talking, been firing on all cylinders. And him and I, uh, in this coming year, we're going to be uh, getting together and filming some content and really oh, trying cool. to you know, break the internet with uh, this second generation <laughs> that was trading together. So That's awesome. Time, sure. Now, what had happened? I know he was working for your company for a while, and was there some kind of a bad split or something? No, there wasn't a bad split. Um, you know, his uh, contract just came up with us, and, you know, we were talking about the RTDs very, very in-depth at the beginning of this interview. Yeah. I won't get into exact numbers, obviously, but a, a good portion of our business has to do with RTDs. Sure. And, uh, you know, our performance products, while they're absolutely incredible when you talk about formulations, they don't sell as well as our RTDs. So for us to be paying a pro of his caliber because you know it was one thing when he was an amateur with us but sure. you know he went on one nationals overall he's going to win the new york pro that's a big name pro that needs a big name contract and right. at the time the dollars just didn't make sense for it so there okay. was no animosity between us there was no like terrible terrible split um mm -hmm. You know, if anything, I felt like um, him and I had became kind of, you know, like brothers in a sense, and Lee had become kind of a father figure in a sense, and it was mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, like, he just wasn't happy. He was happy with where he was, and, you know, he just kind of got a little ticked off about it, and, you know, I told you how we sat down in California, and, you know, sure. it's like everyone kind of came to, you know, just, you know, like, we, we tried to handle it as good as we could. He tried to handle it as good mm -hmm. as he could. You know, of course, people are going to get hot sometimes when sure. they're not happy about how things happen. But, you know, we both came away from it. Like I said, we hugged it out. We've gotten, you know, both of us grew from it. I think both of us have matured from it. And uh, obviously, he landed with Gat, which I think is a great fit for him. It's definitely a hardcore bodybuilding company. Um, they're definitely using him and putting him out there and mm -hmm. getting their money's worth from him, which is, at the end of the day, what... A supplement company needs from their athlete so sure. Sure. i think everyone landed where they're supposed to like i said him and i are you know firing on all cylinders together um and then yeah so couldn't be happier with the situation between him and i right now i think it's going to be a good one and then you know in the years to come if you're a fan of bodybuilding that's exciting shit man to see him and i up on the same stage i was just gonna say i can't wait to see that pros, that's <laughs> exciting <laughs> Mono a mano at some point maybe in 2020 we'll see you guys battling it out on a stage maybe we'll we'll have you'll have to pull some social media crap and and, and bait uh sergio into doing the new york pro in 2020 <laughs> <laughs> which is not very hard <laughs> to get him to do anything <laughs> call him out a little bit on, on on instagram right nah there ain't nothing like that I'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding you know what? i just want to congratulate you again uh look you know you're a young guy. Uh, it's sometimes very hard to stay, you know, in such a mature zone when you're just first coming up and getting into the sport. But you, you know, you proved that you not only had the legacy behind you of, of your dad, but you that you performed and you were the best man on that stage, you know, last weekend. And I think that that says a lot about your character and about your your future potential in in the IFBB. I appreciate that, Dave. Man, um, you know, like I said, it's. It really hasn't hit me yet, like at all. Um, you know, it's like one of those things. I don't. It, it will eventually, but you know, like one of the one of the things that's hit me so far is you know, like whenever I'm waking up or like just on my phone scrolling through Instagram, you yeah. know, I'll be like, I'll see Rami, I'll see Roly, I'll see <laughs> Dexter, I'll see you know Nathan Deasha, like all these guys, and it's like, holy shit, these are peers of mine now, not people that I look up to and idols, you know. So that yeah. that's. That, that's really, really cool. Wait, wait, till you stop beat, wait till you stop beating them. They won't be so, so friendly anymore to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations again. Enjoy the, enjoy the victory. It doesn't last very long, but uh, for now, you can call yourself the NPC National Champion, and that's a great title. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate you having me on, man. I'm looking yeah. forward to the next time. All right, and that's going to take us, guys, to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.